Alright guys, it is a gorgeous Sunday evening, well, getting a late Sunday night here, in the collapse of global industrial civilization, we are back at Bugs in a Jar Farm, got the little dog on the table, I feel like I'm sinking down, I feel like my, the, my house is kind of sliding downhill since November, so, uh, but anyway, I decided to find time for a small rant for going to bed tonight. Where are we? It is Sunday, May 15th, 2022. A gorgeous evening, but of course, tomorrow we have strong thunderstorms, damaging winds, large hail, and possibly a tornado. So we could have some be rocking tomorrow, but that's tomorrow. So today, uh, anyway, so I, I had this fellow come by today. I am uh, have all of my plans. He's the guy who saved my house from getting washed away in a flood last year by building that levee, and he's out here doing some more flood control work and maybe putting in a second $5,000 pond. So anyway, and by the way, he's 63 years old. He has a four-year-old and his wife is pregnant. No more comment needed there. So anyway, we got to talking and despite the fact that he's 63 years old with a pregnant wife, he's not totally a clueless moron, this guy. He's just this regular average Joe and I don't know about you guys, but I am actually meeting more and more regular average Joes talking about, you know, the basic collapse of everything and starting with the economy. And so he had, you know, all of his trucks and machinery and everything are run on diesel. And he told me, and I believe the guy, I guess. I mean, his entire business is dependent on diesel. But without diesel, the guy is out of a job and everyone depending on the man uh, is, is screwed. He told me with the price of diesel, which is now $6.19 in my town, he thinks we're looking at $10 diesel by July is his prediction. And he was telling me that he is going not to spend $70,000 on diesel, but he's going to spend $70,000 more on diesel than he did last year. Uh, good Lord. So the guy is on freak out. So the other thing he told me is... Uh, that he expects that business is good this summer, but he expects next summer that he and his newborn baby, uh, you know, might be entering the zombie apocalypse. And I said, what are you talking about? And he thinks the uh, economy is going to crash uh, in the next 12 months. That this is his reading of the tea leaves that he has one more year to make hay while the sun shines. And what he told me, what, uh, and I don't think I was too insulted by this, what he is finding this summer, he said that more and more people are dipping like I am. He goes, like you, Sam, more and more people, they're digging into their nest eggs and instead of saving money for this upcoming economic crash that they're buying shit like uh, $5,000 ponds that they don't need and $1,700 driveways to nowhere, that he's noticing people because of the rate of inflation that they're going ahead and spending their money instead of leaving it in savings because it, the inflation is just eating up all their money. So they're just saying to hell with it. And, and, and they're enjoying it while they still can. And he's getting all of these orders for these, you know, basically these vanity projects. And uh, so anyway, that was the message from that man. 
And then I come in here to the mainstream media today and I find this story from Business Insider. If you think gas prices are bad, diesel is in its worst crisis since the 1970s and has even raised fears of localized rationing and where they're talking about in this story that they're talking about in New York that the diesel situation in the state of New York has gotten so critical that there could be rationing diesel uh, this summer. Uh, so anyway, I'm just going to read a little bit of this. While Americans are reeling from sticker shock at the gas pump, the diesel market is in its worst crisis since the 1970s, analysts say. Diesel fuels much of the economy, including big rig trucks, farm equipment, and industrial machinery. Prices, you know, average out over the U.S., hit a record $5.56 per gallon, I guess, last week in the U.S., up 76.5% from a year ago. And I'm sure uh, people in New York would love 556 diesel. As I say, it's 619 and going up, up, up. Uh, this is Jim Mitchell, no relation to me. Uh, one of these oil and diesel analysts said, quote, we are demanding more diesel than anyone can supply. In fact, supplies have been dwindling nationwide. Inventories for the most commonly used diesel have dropped 43% since 2020 to their lowest level since 2014. In the Central Atlantic region, inventories have crashed 78% from 2020 to the lowest in a decade. Uh, other categories of diesel are seeing even steeper drops. And in New York, the situation is so dire that refinery and fuel analyst John Castanetis told Bloomberg, I would not be surprised to see diesel being rationed on the East Coast this summer. And then uh, conditions are even worse around the world. In Europe, diesel prices have soared 88%. The International Energy Agency said Thursday that global stockpiles of refined oil, including diesel, have fallen to extremely low levels, and shortages are already limiting transportation across African nations. Imagine that, as well as Yemen, Sri Lanka, and Mexico. Uh, Anyway, then they talk about, you know, back in the 1970s, and then they talk about the war in Ukraine. Uh, anyway, wrapping the bottom line, according to Mr. Mitchell, <clears throat> quote, We are looking at at least two years of higher food prices via farming and limited refining capacities in the world and the U.S., and we are still demanding more diesel than anyone can supply. And I, it really hit me. Now, this is the first time I went shopping uh, in New York. Uh, you know, all of this talk about grocery inflation. Good God, do you know what a, a, a can of baked beans in New York is? A bush's beans. You know, the, 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 can, of, the can of beanie weenies. Uh, what, what was it? $3.79 for a can of beanie weenies. 
There was one kind of dog food, a 12 ounce can of dog food, six dollars. And then uh, I, I went to buy this bag of tilapia, which I remember cost eight dollars last year. Same bag, same brand, same store, eighteen dollars for the bag of frozen tilapia that was eight dollars last year. Anyway, I guess I'll be eating hot dogs for the rest of the summer. So anyway, uh, near that story in, uh, about the diesel from the New York Times, the world is a mess. There you go. You heard it here in the New York Times. The world is a mess. So they have stopped saving for tomorrow. So this is mainly looking at the 20 somethings, looking at their future. In a tumultuous time, many adults under the age of 35 have stopped playing it safe. They are getting out there and enjoying it while they still can. You know, good Lord being in your 20s, looking at the tumultuous world, uh, anybody saving for their future, you, you know. Uh, instead of banking as much of their pay as they used to, they are saving less, spending more, and pursuing passion projects or risky careers. Here is Nimatra Narang, age 27, said she was prudent about almost everything until the end of last year when she had an epiphany. Quote, I don't want to spend my life being so careful and cautious. There you go. Uh, anyway, then they talk a little bit about Corona panic, which we don't need to talk about uh, here. Uh, one thing she had always wanted to do was live in New York, baby. So she packed up everything in her L.A. apartment and made her the move in March. Yes. She also took a new approach to her finances before the corona panic. She said she was putting about $2,000 into her savings account each month. Now it is half that amount. The rest goes towards, you know, the, the more expensive rents evening outs with friends, and small indulgences she would have denied herself before. Yes. I wanted to use my savings to have a life experience, she said. There you go. And she is not alone. A recent study by Fidelity Investments found that 45% of people aged to 35, quote, do not see a point in saving until things return to normal, close quote. And that same age group, 55% said they have put retirement planning on hold. Yes. For some, like Narang, the isolation of the corona panic uh, triggered the decision to enjoy the moment. There you go. Right here in the New York Times. Triggered the decision to enjoy the moment. Financial consequences be damned. For others, the motivation has come from worries over climate change, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, domestic politic instability, political instability, soaring inflation, through the roof housing costs, and a topsy-turvy stock market. Hannah Jones, a stand-up comic in Denver, said she used to save almost all of her discretionary income she was a thrift shop regular who refused to pay for a Netflix subscription. Now 
she has become what she calls a, a quote, financial nihilist, meaning she puts significantly less into her savings. The shaky state of the world has been on her mind, quote, I am not going to deprive myself some of the comforts of life now for a future that feels like it could be ripped away from me at any moment, she said. Sounds like a real comedy routine to me. Uh, in her stand-up act, the 27-year-old Jones has a reliable joke. Quote, No, I am not saving for retirement. I'm going to spend my money now while we still have a supply chain at all. Close quote. It's a quip that changes with the headlines. On some nights, instead of supply chain, she simply plugs in the, cat the catastrophe du jour. Yes. The anti-frugal mood is pervasive. Hannah Fuller, age 25, said she was once enthusiastic about saving for her future. Having taken, having taken financial aid while attending a private high school and college, she was assiduous about managing her money, making sure to max out her Roth IRA each year. But now, she says, her mindset has shifted. It started when she was living in Portland, Oregon, where she grew up during the wildfires of 2020. Quote, being surrounded by the smoke, you could just really feel that doom and gloom. Yep. Uh, yes, you can. It felt like we were living in the Martian, like we were living in an airlock, trying to keep the smoke out of our apartment. Going to these places you visited as a child and seeing them burned to the ground, it makes wanting to build new things very hard. Yes. So now Fuller has broken her habit of ordering the cheapest item on the menu. Mm. She just booked tickets to a summer music festival in Barcelona, Spain. Yes. And given the explosion of the housing market, she has decided that saving to buy a home is not something she's going to worry about. Quote, houses are just so unaffordable. I don't even know if that is worth my time and energy at all. I know exactly how that 25-year-old feels. You should see some of the crap. I wish you could see what, I, what Rob and I went to look at today, this house. 45000 <laughs> You know, they should be paying someone $45,000 to take this house. Some experts say the spend it now attitude is not particular to just the young people of 2022. Quote, this is Brad Klontz, a financial psychologist from Boulder, Colorado. Quote, Every generation has had an apocalyptic view of their lives. Yes. Um, during the Great Depression, he noted many people lost their trust in banks. At the height of the Cold War, the fear of nuclear war affected the way many people plan for the future. And during the 2008 financial crisis, saving for a home felt pointless for many. Quote, we are not wired to save. We are wired to consume. If you have an exciting vision of your future, those are the people who aggressively save for retirement. But if you have an apocalyptic view, vision of the future, 
Why would you save for it? Of course you wouldn't. Yes, exactly. Enjoy it while you still can. That dim view of what is to come can be exacerbated by issues like climate change. Danilo Jimenez, who, who is planning to go to graduate school to study environmental policy in the fall, said he has put saving for his retirement on hold in favor of spending that money on weekend trips and moving out of his parents' home to live with roommates in New York City. Quote, this is a 25-year-old, <clears throat> quote, the idea that I am going to put money away into an account that I cannot access till I'm 60, that's 2056. A lot of things are going to change by then with respect to climate change, close quote, yeah, and everything else. Uh, rather than put his pay into a traditional savings account, Schuler Wagner, 25, has been pouring, <laughs> I, I can't make this stuff up, guys, has been pouring his time and money into an idiosyncratic investment, coral farming. For Wagner, a financial analyst in Tempe, Arizona, aquaculture was a childhood hobby that he gave up in his college years because large tanks don't exactly fit in dorms. Yeah, so he is raising, he is farming coral. He's going to save the coral reefs. Wagner spends seven hundred and fifty to fifteen hundred dollars on his coral farming materials and equipment every month. He hopes that one day his expensive hobby will pay off and he can pursue aquaculture as a full-time job. Yes, quote, Rather than just trying to save to compete with inflation, as this fellow was saying,